Alrighty. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today, you guys, like I said, we're going to introduce some new terminology. Raise your hand if you've ever heard these words before. Raise your hand if you've heard the word cosecant before. That's what I, that's what I thought. Raise your hand if you've heard the word secant before. That's what I thought. Raise your hand if you've heard the word cotangent before. A couple of us? Okay, okay. Well, here's what I want you guys to do. Okay, turn your paper over to where we have some blank space on the back. Let's go ahead and define what these guys actually are. Okay, and we're gonna rewind it back to when you guys first learned fractions in whatever little baby grade that was. Okay, so this is our little baby example, I'll call it. Okay, let's say we have the fraction of, we are given two thirds as a fraction. Just some fraction, two over three, why not? Okay, what does the word reciprocal mean of that fraction? Or in other words, what is the reciprocal of two over three? What is the reciprocal of two over three? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so the reciprocal, I'll try and spell that out, reciprocal. I have no idea if I spelled that right, but you get the idea. The reciprocal, the denominator goes on top, numerator now goes on bottom. It's just three over two. Yeah, Donovan. So I flip it as well. Just flip it, yep, that's all you're doing. Okay, so we know up to this point, we've been given three trigonometric functions, okay? The three functions that we have are sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? Which we abbreviate to S-I-N, C-O-S, T-A-N. Not sin, we still call it sine. Okay, sine, cosine, and tangent. But we can rewrite these guys and make them fractions. Technically, they are, they are a fraction. Sine is the same thing as sine over one right cosine is the same thing as cosine over one and tangent is the same thing as tangent over one there's always that invisible one on bottom always no matter what okay well here's where these new terms are actually coming into play they are the reciprocals of these guys okay so what is the reciprocal of sine over one. Don't overthink this. What's the reciprocal of sine uh, over one? One over sine. Okay. This reciprocal has its own name. We don't call this one over sine. We call this co secant. Okay, and that's its long version of the name. The abbreviation of this is CSC. So cosecant or CSC for abbreviation. Cosecant. Okay. It is the reciprocal of one over sine. It's like they hold hands with each other, right? They're just the reciprocals of each other. Okay, well, let's go back to cosine then. What is the reciprocal of cosine over one? One over cosine. Guess what? He has his own name as well. This one's name is secant. We abbreviate this guy as SEC, secant. Okay, and last one. Sorry, Donovan, question? Question? Uh -huh. yep. Okay, finally, what is the reciprocal of tangent over one? One over tangent. One over tangent. And this guy also has its own name, and this is kind of the only one that really makes sense. <laughs> the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. That one to me is the easiest to remember, tangent and cotangent. The rest are like, what the heck? Okay, we abbreviate this guy to just C-O-T. Here's a little trick. 
to help you guys remember this because trigonometry, it's a lot of just memorization. Okay, here's a little trick, I'll show you. There needs to be a co present in every single pair. So with sine and cosecant, there's the co. Okay, okay, there's one co. With cosine and secant, there's the co. Okay, okay. And then with tangent and cotangent, there's the co. Because a lot of times we want to think, okay, the reciprocal of cosine is cosecant. That would make a lot of sense, right? No, they didn't do that. For some reason, sine goes with cosecant, cosine goes with secant. Okay, so just a little trick. Just make sure there's one co for every pair. Boom. Okay, it's literally the reciprocal. You just learned three new front functions. They're just the reciprocals of the other guys. Okay, so turn your paper back over. For the first four examples on our notes, we are working with our original three functions, just sine, cosine, and tangent. Not too difficult, okay? So one thing we want to remind ourselves is the ratios that go with these guys. So, ka, toa. If you have that down pat, then awesome, okay? If you remember that, you're golden. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at number one then. So it's wanting us to find the sine of theta. No, that is not zero. That is just another weird representation of something we don't know, theta, they call it. Okay, so which means we're standing here at theta, tells us where we're standing. Think of it like the same thing as x. Okay, so here's the thing, you guys. What two sides do I need with sine? Opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. Which one are the two that work with sine? Hypotenuse. hypotenuse is one, which is this one right here. What's the other one I need to work with? Adjacent or opposite? Opposite. opposite. Wait a second. <laughs> oh, no. Are we given the hypotenuse? No. Nope. nope. What do we got to do? We got to find it. Yay. We get to find it. Yep. Okay, so now we got to find this side where you're like, oh crap, I need the hypotenuse. I'm not given the hypotenuse. Okay, that's okay. You guys have like a whole bunch of tools in your tool bag to find missing sides of right triangles. Let's use my favorite one. Okay, when we are given two sides of a right triangle, we can find the third side by using Pythagorean theorem, which you guys have been practicing since little baby freshman year. Okay. So let's plug in what we know. We know we don't have C, right? That is our hypotenuse. We need that. So that's going to stay a C for now. Well, let's go ahead and just make 8 our A, 15 our B. Now we can plug it in. I have 8 squared plus 15 squared for my B. Don't know what C is because we weren't given it. That's what we're trying to find. We'll just keep it as C. That's fine. You can choose whatever letter you want, actually. Okay, now here's our little review. 8 squared, tell me what is 8 squared, you guys? What's 8 times 8? 64. 64. What about 15 squared? 225. <laughs> 225. Thank you. Yes, it is. Okay, what do we need to do with that 64 and 225? They're both on that side. Just add them together. Thank you, Bella. Don't have to awkwardly sing to you guys. Yeah. You're like. Oh. That's why I did it because I didn't want to hear it again. I'm sorry. Hey, I understand. It's a teaching tool. Okay. I got 289 equals C squared. Last thing I got to do is get rid of that squared on the C. What do I do? What's the opposite of squared? Square root. Square root. Square root. Square root. I have no idea what this is, so I'm going to pull out my calculator. I want to type in the square root of 289. Oh, that's nice. Gives me a beautiful answer of just 17. Woohoo! C equals 17. I'll tell you guys that that is the hardest part of this problem. Finding the side you don't have. And guess what? You know how to do that. You know how to use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, now all we got to do, we have the two sides we need. 
So I have sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. What now is my ratio? Opposite over hypotenuse. 15 over 17. You got it. And there's our final answer. Sine of theta equals 15 over 17. Boom. Nothing new here. You just kind of had to reach into your tool bag and be like, okay, wait, I need to find this missing side. I know how to do that. Pythagorean theorem. Boom, boom, boom. I know that sine goes with opposite and hypotenuse. Boom, boom. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and skip number two. Let's look at number three. Alrighty, it wants tangent of theta this time. So let's go ahead and stand at theta. What two sides do I need for tangent? Uh-huh. Okay, it's giving me the hypotenuse, which I'm not even going to label because we don't even care about that. I need this opposite sign, which, crap, we don't have. And the adjacent side, which we do have. How am I going to find that missing side? What am I using? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Here we go. Okay, this time 17 is my C. That's across from the hypotenuse. We'll go ahead and say that A is missing. Why not? And 8 can be our B. Okay, so we have A squared, which we don't know. It'll stay A. B squared, we labeled as 8. So 8 squared equals 17 squared. Boom. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Finding that missing side. All righty, all righty. Okay, so we have a squared, which we have no idea, so that has to stay a squared. 8 squared, 64. 17 squared, what was that? Oh gosh, don't make me seem to you guys again. 17 times 17. Oh. 289. Thank you. 289. Ooh, okay, this one's a little different than number one. What do I need to do with the 289 and the 64 this time? 64 on both sides. Yes. Okay, this time I need to move the 64 to the other side, which means I got to do the opposite, which is to subtract it from both sides. Last time we had to add them. This time we're subtracting. So A squared equals 289. What is it? 225. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's my last step? How do I get rid of that squared attached to my A? Square root. Square root. A equals what? Guess what? It's up top on number one. <laughs> Square root of 225 is what? 15. Woohoo! We have the missing side we need, finally. We have the opposite and the adjacent, which are the two sides I need for tangent. So now I can write my final answer of tangent of theta equals opposite 15 over adjacent 8. Boom, boom. Tangent of theta equals opposite 15 over adjacent 8. We just had to find out what that opposite side was first. They're not making it easy on you. They know you guys can handle it. Alrighty. For space and for time's sake, let's go ahead and now look at, well, well, how are we feeling? <laughs> fist of five, fist of five, how are we feeling? <laughs> I agree we're tired. I think everybody's tired. We're just universally tired. Okay, cool, sounds good. Um, let's go ahead and skip to number six. Okay, we'll probably do six and eight just for like space-wise. Maybe six and seven, I don't know. I haven't decided. Okay, so what do you notice that's different now? Is cotangent one of our three originals or one of the reciprocals? It's one of the reciprocals. Which one is it the reciprocal of? Tangent. Okay, so let's put a little note that cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. I'm just going to make that little note on my paper. Okay, tangent is going to help us find cotangent. Okay, well, we're still standing at theta. First, I need to start with finding tangent, and then I can just flip it. Okay, so that's, what, that's our game plan. Find tangent, then just flip it because that's where it's the reciprocal. I need opposite and adjacent. Opposite, eight, 
adjacent, I don't have. Oh, guys, 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 let me tell you. Work smarter, not harder, okay? I will tell you this triangle is the same exact triangle that we've now done twice. If my hypotenuse is 17, look back at number one and three. If my hypotenuse is 17 and one of the legs is eight, 15. what is the other leg, Bella? It's Bella. It's Bella. It's, it's Bella. It's Bella. Yeah. That side is Bella. Right. Yep. It's 15, right? Why would we plug that into the Pythagorean theorem and solve for the third time? Okay, so if you notice things like that, by all means, use it. You're like, oh my gosh, this, this triangle seems really familiar. Yep, that side's 15. Did we even need to plug it in? Nope, now I have the sides I need. Okay, so first we're gonna start with tangent, finding the tangent of theta. So tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent 15. But that's not my end goal. I want the reciprocal, which is cotangent. Oh, you just flip it. You just flip it. It's literally that easy. Oh. If tangent of theta is eight over 15, cotangent of theta is 15 over eight. Nice. Beautiful, you guys. All right, let's do number seven. Just to get this idea of reciprocals, I want to practice it some more. And then I promise you nine through 12 is like the easiest thing ever. If you have a calculator, <laughs> you're going to love it. Okay, number seven. Again, we're working with cotangent. What is that one the reciprocal of? Sine, cosine, or tangent? Tangent, okay. So first step is gonna to be to find the actual tangent of it and then we can just flip it over. Okay, so I'm standing at theta. To find tangent, I need, uh -huh, I need the opposite side, which I don't have, and I need the adjacent side, darn it. What are we gonna to have to do to find that missing side? Use what, Jameson? What am I gonna to do to find that missing side? What theorem? You got it. Okay, so we'll say that three is A, it's one of our legs. We'll say B is missing this time, don't know what B is. That's my opposite side I need. Across from my hypotenuse is always C. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, hush. Okay, I can plug it in now. A squared, three squared, plus B squared, I don't know, that's the side I'm trying to find, equals C squared, five squared. Okay. All right. You guys know how to do this. What is three squared? What's three times three? Nine. B, we don't know. So that just has to stay B squared for now. What's five squared? Five times five. Mm -hmm. I always think of people say like, like when we're doing it like that, to literally multiply by, I always think in my head, oh, it's adding, mm -hmm. to add that. Mm -hmm. It's not. Okay, so we have our equation. I need B to get by itself. So what do I need to do with the 25 and the 9, though? Subtract. What? Subtract, what? okay? I need to move the 9 over to this side, so we do the opposite. Oh, okay. I thought it had to be in the middle for that to work. Nope. Hey, Jameson and Gabe. Hush your mouth. We have 25 minus 9 on that side. What's that going to give me? 25 minus 9. What you get, what you okay. get. Beautiful. And what is my last step? Square root. Square root. Square root. Square root. What is my missing side? My B. Square root of 16 is what? 8. No, not 8. What multiplies by itself to oh, give us 16? It's 4. four. Yeah, I got it. Okay, okay, so we found that missing side. Now we can go ahead and do what we're actually asked to do. So the first one, let's find tangent. Finding tangent will allow us to find cotangent. So tangent of theta equals opposite over three. So then what does that mean over here that cotangent is? You got it. 
Boom. Okay, now don't think like you flip it and make it negative and you're doing all this extra stuff. No, it literally is like, boop, flip. That's it. Top on bottom, bottom on top. Boom. One more. One more example. And then we'll go on to the easy ones. Yes, yes, yes. You love it. All righty. Ooh, this is a good one. This is a reciprocal function that we might need a little, little look on our little cheat sheet on the back. We're asked to find secant. What is secant the reciprocal of? Sine, cosine, or tangent? Cosine. It's cosine. Okay, so cosine is going to help us find the secant. Okay, but it's not going to be nice to you guys. Sorry about that. You're standing at theta. For cosine, you need adjacent, which we know, and hypotenuse, which sadly we do not know. Darn it. Oh. That's okay. You can find it. Okay, so this is my C side of my right triangle, right? Across from my hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and just make 12A. 9 can be B. Why not? Plug it into our Pythagorean theorem. 12 squared plus 9 squared equals C squared. I don't know the C. That's why I'm using C. 12 squared. What's 12 times 12? 12 times 12. 12 times 12. 46. Thank you. What about 9 times 9? Nine? 9 squared. 81. 81. Okay, here's a little refresher. Hey, hey, hey. Hush, 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 hush. Okay, what am I doing with 144 and 81 this time? I'm adding them because they're both on that side. I'm not moving any of them. I just need to combine them. Okay, so what is 144 plus 81? 225. Equals C squared. What's my last step to get that squared off? Square root it. Boom, 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 boom. And my missing side is 15. Woohoo! 15. We have the side we need for cosine. We have 15. Okay, so first we find cosine and then we just flip it over. So cosine of theta equals adjacent 9 over hypotenuse 15. So then what does that mean that secant of theta is? Flip it over. 15 over 9. Woohoo. Woohoo. Mm -hmm. Nice. Show me a fist of five on the reciprocal idea. You might have to use Pythagorean theorem to find missing sides of triangles. You guys are upper level. You're not just oh, adding and subtracting anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'm just, cool. I'm just all righty, here's where it, it gets a little easier. Okay, so our directions tell us use a calculator to find each. Yes, you are literally just going to be punching these into a calculator. So make sure you have one of my calculators, turn it on, and you should see a little DEG in that bottom right corner. Do you see like DEG? Yes. Everybody who's. Dang. Calculator, Dang. Connor, Connor, calculator. Yep, okay, cool. Okay, if you see that DEG, it means it's in degree mode. We want it in degree mode for these, okay? So, we are asked to find the cosine of negative 28. You are literally going to punch this in. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on my calculator. The cosine of negative, do not forget the negative, 28, parentheses. Okay, let's see what it wants us to round to. Ooh, 10 thousandths. Okay, so we have tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. It wants it to four decimal places. So let's go ahead and round it to four decimal places. This is going to be 0 0.882. And is the 9 going to be bumped up or yes. stay a 9? Or stay a 9. Stay a 9 because a 4 is behind it, right? So our final answer, cool. 0 0.88, what was it, 29. And you're like, oh my gosh, literally, I just have to punch it into a calculator. That's the easiest thing ever. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> okay. 
Let's find cosine of 10. This is easy. Okay, so in my calculator, I'm gonna do cosine of 10. Let's practice rounding four decimal places. So nine, eight, four. And is the eight gonna be bumped up or kept an eight? Kept an eight. Kept an eight. It's a zero behind it. So nine, eight, four, eight equals 0 0.9848. Boom, boom. Okay, on numbers 11 and 12, this is the only thing that's like kind of you have to think about a little bit. So cosecant. Wait, this is a reciprocal. What is it the reciprocal of? Cosecant. Sine, cosine, or tangent? Cosecant. Is it the reciprocal of sine, cosine, or tangent? Cosecant. It's sine. It's sine. Okay, so. I'm having so much problem staying focused. Here's what you're going to have to punch into your calculator. Okay, pay attention here or else you will punch it in wrong. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So here's what you're actually going to punch into your calculator because there's no cosecant button. Sorry, they didn't make it that easy on you. You're now going to have to punch in 1 over sine of 50 because that is the reciprocal, cosecant sine of 50. Okay, but then after that, that little thinking that you have to do, it becomes super easy. 1 divided by sine of 50. Again, four decimal places. So after my decimal, one, two, three, four, is the four gonna be bumped up or kept to four? Kept to four. Kept to four, so 1.3054. 1 1.3054. 1 .3054. Okay, again, that's the only one that you're like, oh, I can't just punch it into the calculator, I have to do the, the little trick one over. So is the one, do you do the one over top every time with mm -hmm, all those ones? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so last one, number 12, secant. What is secant the reciprocal of? What button am I going to have to push on my calculator? Sine? No, the, uh, co cosine. Cosine, okay. So this one really is one over cosine of 255, which is what I'm going to punch into my calculator. So I have... 1 divided by or over cosine of 255. Boom. Ooh, we get a negative here. Interesting. Okay, so four decimal places. 1, 2, 3, 4. Is the 7 going to be bumped up or kept to 7? Kept to 7. It's a zero behind it. So 3.8637. Or negative 3, actually. Negative 3.8637. Okay, one more thing I want us to talk about before I set you free on your assignment. Turn your paper over and look at how nice I am to you guys. Okay, remember how um, a couple classes ago <clears throat> I gave you a blank unit circle and we had to fill in all this mumbo jumbo? Yeah. I'm giving you a filled out one with literally every piece of information you could ever want. The new, the new piece of information here that is going to make your life so easy, right Jameson? So easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Notice here that it's giving you coordinate points. The coordinate points are ugly, but they're coordinate points, okay? So here's what we have to know with coordinate points, okay? So coordinate points are usually written X and Y, right? X comes first, then our Y coordinate. Yes, you've known that for a while. When we're talking about sine, cosine, and tangent, X is our cosine. Y is our sign, and tangent, write this down, is sine over cosine. Yes, a little weird, but we'll talk about that more. Just have that down on your paper. X coordinate, the one that's first is your cosine. The one that's second is your sine. And if it asks you to find tangent, you just divide those two. So for example, let's practice finding one. Give me Little challenge question. Give me the cosine of 60 degrees. 60 degrees being right here. 
Cosine would be the first coordinate point. What's cosine of 60 degrees? Look at that. Boom. Okay, another challenge question. What is the sine of 180 degrees? 180 degrees, sine. Look at that. You guys are awesome. Okay, beautiful. I just made your life so much easier. You just learned that you